Our gospel today, of course, is indeed a very inspiring gospel of Mark. It's a picture that sometimes we are given of what the people of Nazareth must have seen when Jesus walked in the church door or the synagogue door and decided that it was time for him to preach and to teach. And like a lot of us, there was a good group of people there. It was the Sabbath. Oh, we have to come on the Sabbath, you know. <laughs> Do not break the Sabbath day. That's one of the light commandments, you know, one of the, one of the early commandments. Keep holy the Sabbath day. And by God, the Jewish people were good at that. They kept holy the Sabbath day. So there was a good crowd of people at Mass or at their service. Jesus stands up and he teaches and preaches and they all look at him and say, Wow, where is he getting all this stuff? This man is absolutely brilliant. And then they think for a while. And familiarity <coughs> is what happens. Wait a minute, isn't he the son? Isn't he a carpenter? Isn't he walking just down the road from us? Isn't he the son of Mary? And of his brothers and sisters here with us. Don't we know him? And then something else happens. With familiarity, of course, comes categorization. That's a nice word. It means placing someone into a set of categories. And here they go, and they place Jesus into that particular category. And they take offense. I like the way that Mark puts that. He says, they take offense to him. And I often wonder how, if it was in today's world, that Jesus walked into this particular church, or into another Catholic church, and stood up and said the same things that he said on the day that he spoke in Nazareth. Would we be amazed and then categorize him and stick him in a box? And put him over in the corner? Because that's what's happening in our world. We are being categorized. The Word of God is categorized. It is in a box and it is to remain in that box. Don't let it out. It's okay to open the box on Sunday. It's fine. Bring it out, put it out in the front, open it up, let a bit, little bit of air in, let Jesus pop out, say a few words, and just as soon as he's finished, <coughs> close the box and throw him back in the corner. Because that's what we do. That's what we are doing. We are doing that. We categorize our church. We categorize our faith. It's fine for Sunday, Father. We don't need to hear it during the week. Thank you very much. We don't want to know about it. Or we already know enough. That's another one. Another foil, another failing, a falsehood that we have in many ways. We all claim we know so much, and yet at the same time, we don't know anything because we don't learn it. We don't ask, what is Jesus saying? What's he telling us? What's he trying to get to us from that box, in a way? Why is it that we don't follow him in the ways of the church? Oh, Father, it's great to be Catholic. I love being Catholic, but I don't agree with what the church says. <laughs> I have heard that so many times. I'm still trying to reel myself back. What do they mean by that? I don't agree with what the church teaches. Well, then if you're not, if you don't agree with what the church teaches, you're not a Catholic. I say that to them and they get all upset. Hey, Father, but the church is not... But then the next problem is, do you know what the church teaches? 
Oh yes, I know. It tells us to be nice and to love everyone and to do the things that are good. Well, that's true. Yeah, well, you're, you've got one up on you there. But we have categorized our church into an idea of fellowship and niceties. How dare the priest, or how dare Jesus Christ in Nazareth stood up and tell the people that they're doing something wrong. Our society, in other words, that's what they're telling us. How dare the church stand up and tell us that we're wrong in what we do and what we say. Get back into your box. Because that's where you're supposed to be. You're only supposed to come out on Sunday, say a few nice words, and tell everybody that God loves them. And, you know, that would be nice. Just do that. And then go and have nice fellowship, and everything will be fine. Lovely sentiment, by the way. But nothing to it. Fellowship is something that is needed, yes, there's no doubt about it. But the other end of it is, of course, we have to understand what are we being taught. What is what Jesus Christ is trying to tell us? We look at what happened with the courts in our country. They turn around and tell us that it's okay now. We have redefined marriage. We are the new church. We have the new teaching. It is no longer marriage between a man and a woman. It's between two persons. Given time, marriage will not exist at all because marriage will be redefined and redefined and redefined. And then you have the Catholic Church in a way, and he turns around and says, no, this is wrong. This is not what God has ordered. And they say, get into your box and stay in your box, please. You are not welcome with your safety. That is what Bishop Joe was talking about in that letter that he wrote to us all. And I want you to read it. Read it carefully. But that's only one side of it. The thing is, of course, we have lost the sense of the presence of God. We ourselves, the Catholic Church, has decided that God and Jesus Christ is now in the tabernacle. In that little silver gold colored box at the back of the altar. And he is locked up nice and tight. Peter will walk over, open him up on Sunday, take him out, put him on the altar, and then put him back in the box. And okay, don't worry about it. It's done for the week. It's fine. And that's what we did. We walk out of the church, everything is broken, honky dory. We had a nice day. We got communion. Well, I got bad news for you. Or no, maybe, it's not bad news. It's good news. Let's twist it around a little bit. You have received Christ. It's not about, he is no longer in the box. He is in your heart. Because that's what you have received. When you put your hand out and you say amen, you're saying, yes, Lord, come out of the box and come into me. And then when I go outside the door, I am the image of Christ for the rest of the world. And I will stand up for my faith and I will not be lukewarm or fluffy about it. That's where we're, we're a little bit upset, I suppose. We are afraid to upset other people because we believe in the truth. 
according to the natural law that God has given us. We're afraid to turn around and tell people that they're doing something that is sinful because they will turn their backs and walk away on us. We're afraid that we will be put in a box because we say such things. Oh, Father is being harsh again today. Why? Because we know what Father is saying probably is true. We do the niceties. We want the niceties. But there is something else we have to be ready for. And that is the understanding of persecution. The church is going to go through a purification. Not just a persecution, by the way, but also a purification. We are going to be asked to stand and be counted as people of faith. Not just as people in Crockett, Texas, in the small Catholic Church, obscure to the rest of the nation. No. We are to stand so tall that even Crockett can be seen from anywhere in the world. Why? Because we believe in the real presence of Christ who is here in this altar. At this very moment in time, who stands with us and gives us the strength and courage to be able to do what is right in the understanding of His gracious law. It's not my law. I know if I was doing the laws, I'd probably be like the rest of the world. I would probably want to make them easy for everyone, so I would be liked. Well, sadly that's not the case. And when we become familiar, we do that. We end up putting things and categorizing things into a box. And we leave that familiarity. Leave it there. I am comfortable right there. Please leave me here. Don't challenge me. Don't ask me to change my ways of my life. Why? Because I am familiar <laughs> with what I have and I want to keep it that way. Is that not true? We all like to be comfortable. I do too. I'll be honest about it. Sometimes I listen to what the bishop has to say or I sometimes read what the church has to say and I don't really like what it says. But I know that I have to change because I've figured out that it is through God's holy grace that I am standing here. <coughs> It is through God's holy grace that you are here. It's through God's holy grace that we have the sacrament of the Eucharist that is here. It is not my doing. It is not your doing. It is God's doing. And we have all have to make a choice in this world. We can't keep Jesus in the box. We either get up and say, we are Catholic and we believe in it and we'll do what you ask, Lord, through the teachings of the church. And if you don't understand the teachings of the church, well, I tell you, get up and learn it. Read it. I don't know if many of you read the encyclical that came out from Saint well, Pope Francis last week. I know one person did, because one of two did actually. <laughs> but did anyone else read it? Did anyone else just decide to say, look, I'll take a look and see what the Pope has to say? I would say no. Then the next question is, well, if you haven't read that one, I suppose you haven't read 
John Paul II is great in cyclical faith and reason. I would say that's the case here. So then I come back to Vatican II. And there were 10 documents that were written in Vatican II. I wonder how many of you have read those documents of the church, especially on the social teachings, for instance. I wouldn't say you have read them either. Then the next question is why? Because you have come familiar and you put them in the box and you have said stay there. The only time I will go to that box if I need something and someone dies, or someone is sick someone needs consolation or there's something going wrong in my life now I will go to the box and I will ask Jesus to help me what do you think his response will be? Mark Twain said and I'll finish with that familiarity breeds content think about it In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.